What's up, guys? Welcome back to Orlando Out of Contacts. It's Johnny. And Stephanie. And, Stephanie. and we have a special guest today, Brandy. Welcome, hey, Brandy. Brandy. Hello. And Brandy is here from, I'm going to butcher this. Hannah Lee. Hannah Lee. Hannah Hannah Lee. Hannah Lee. Hannah Lee. Hannah Lee. Hannah Lee. Hey, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not Hawaiian. I'm Caucasian. No, no you're fine. <laughs> Are Hawaiians Caucasian too? Uh, no, there's a little bit of everything. Difference? There's a little bit of everything out there. Well, Brandon's <laughs> gonna let us know all about that. Okay, so we actually went to a private event at House on Lang uh, last month, and we saw your little sh- Hawaiian ice trailer there, and we had some delicious yes. treats. And we thought, how cool! We did a little bit more research. Uh, the bride and the groom taught us, uh, told us that they had such a good experience with you guys, Aww. and we wanted to get to know a little bit more about your business. Uh, it's so- it's a whole Hawaiian shave ice. So uh, the difference between Hawaiian shave ice and like a snow cone or something like that is uh, mainly the the powdery feeling of the ice itself. So it's like super soft, and there's not much mouth texture to it. So it's fun. And then um, I just make these really creative. Um, sauces out of local ingredients that are fresh and delicious and very little sugar and it makes for a really fun treat and i also noticed that you have like um like whole fruit and whipped cream like you don't normally see that on a snow cone either no No, absolutely not (laughs) no my favorite is uh the pog juice oh yeah so you know i didn't know that the pog juice was like so i'm a big disney fan obviously and one of the juices that they carry at a lot of their breakfast restaurants is pog juice. And for, I swear to you, I always thought it was just like some magical Disney juice. <laughs> and then when I saw it on the menu at your at your stand, I said, oh, God, it's pog juice. Wait, what is pog juice again? Well, yeah, tell us what pog yeah, juice is. Yeah, because I don't remember if I had that one or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, it was pog, delicious, though. But. That was good stuff. Uh, so <laughs> pog is passion, orange, and guava. And what's oh. special about it is it's like, the Hawaiian like favorite drink because it's basically a Mai Tai minus the rum unless you got some you know what I'm saying oh, <laughs> so, yeah it's delicious so that's what about okay so I did have it because that, that was the, the one signature. that I liked that was the signature one that I had at the, at the wedding okay that was really good and I did add rum because you told me if you want to make you want to spice it up <laughs> add a little rum to it and I that's did it, and it was really really good it was so good I like that what other, what kind of other flavors do you have? Do you like rotate the flavors oh, or? You know, I have about 30 flavors um, wow. and I, I, and I, I do rotate some of them out. Like right now we're getting, we're letting the matcha have a little rest, but we have like Lily Koi is passion fruit or people call it parcha depending on where you're from. Uh, so we have passion fruit, strawberry, guava, strawberry. We're doing a strawberry lemonade next week, which is really good because it's going to use Meyer lemons. Um, I have a blueberry and Meyer lemon this week. Uh, we have Brutta beer, which is kind of like butter beer, but no lawsuit included. You know, it's kind of got that <laughs> butterscotch <laughs> milky flavor. Um, yeah, so I try especially to with like, the whipped cream on top. Yes, oh my god, with the whipped cream and then more butterscotch on top. It's it's one of my top sellers just because it's so good. And then we do and is that like, like a Oreo seasonal flavor or, or, or more well, of a all year long flavor per se? That one's kind of an all year long because Orlando embraced it so early on. Okay. Um, the, the whipped cream was actually, it's not what you see on typical Hawaiian shave ice. It's really unique because Orlando didn't, there's normally what Hawaiians put on top of their shave ice is called habapia and that's a coconut foam. And I love it. But Orlando, whenever I first started, was like, what is this? (laughs) They didn't get it yet. So I said, whipped cream. It's going to be amazing. And I found a really high quality whipped cream. And now I can't. There's no going back. Everybody loves it. (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty cool, though, because like there's that. That means we have to try some of the other new flavors. then, because like 30 flavors is a lot of cool different flavors. Do you ever put like any like maybe some seasonal flavors? Like like right now we just had, you know, the holidays. Did you have any Mm -hmm. recently during the holidays? Yeah, I had like a peppermint mocha. We did a ginger snap cookie. Mm. Uh, we had eggnog. We had coquito. Uh, my ah, future daughter. I know. People in Orlando would love that. <laughs> Coquitos. All the Spanish coquitos. people love the coquitos. Imagine eating that as shave eyes. That'd be so good. Oh, I also was- saw you were selling snowballs. Oh, yes. So those are fun. 
So we do that once a year, or sometimes people around their birthday will ask us to make a snowball fight for them. It started out as just our family tradition. Um, some of our family members don't do Christmas, some of them do. And so we decided to start doing a snowball fight annually. And um, it makes the most perfect snowballs. They actually uh, fall apart just like a regular sn snowball does. Uh, so you're not hurting each other. <laughs> Doing, if you did a regular like snow cone, you probably felt somebody with it and they'd be injured. But this is like super light and airy. Um, so the kids love it. We had a, a, a group of, I think, 15 kids that came and did a snowball fight and they just had a blast. They took it all their snowballs over to Lake Highland Park, and which is right around the corner. And they just mm -hmm. had a great time. It's fun. And especially since we don't get any snow here in Orlando, yeah. like no. you basically are bringing the snow to them to kind of have a winter experience here in Orlando. Right. So that's pretty cool. Right. Exactly. Very <laughs> One cool. thing I, I was reading on your website, I saw that you also have a unique process. You don't just use like regular water. Could you could you give a little mm -hmm. information a little about that? That probably Absolutely. what gives the unique taste to your to your shape ice as well. Yeah, whenever I was in Hawaii, um, on the island of Kauai, where my family is native. And my mm -hmm. father is Kanaka Maoli, which means he's a, he's a true native Hawaiian and I'm half Hawaiian and German. I tried some of those, uh, the water there and mm -hmm. the water is a very special because it's very silky and just mm -hmm. oh, absolutely delicious. And so I had some of that analyzed and we decided that we would put some of the Hawaiian minerals um, also into the water. And so we use a, a type of several different ingredients that make it just the perfect alkalinity. It's a high pH, um, low, no, high alkalinity, low pH. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <Water>. the opposite. <laughs> opposite. I always get those two mixed up. And, and then whenever you freeze it, it has to be frozen to a perfect temperature. It has to be frozen for a certain amount of days. It can't be frozen like overnight. You know, you has to take time yeah. to freeze so that it gets those layers inside of it. So whenever you shave it, it, it turns powdery. Um, it was a, a long process of learning how to do that. <laughs> I mean, it took me a good year to really get that shave the way that it is now. So it's pretty cool. No, but see, that's interesting because like I would just I would have just assumed it was just like regular water, like purified water and stuff. And then when I read on your website that you have this whole process, I was like, I was intrigued. And that's what probably helps with that unique flavor mm -hmm. and texture as well. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, another thing that I really liked about like I remember you and I talked about it at um, at Kim and Josh's wedding was how you use you try to use all organic stuff and you're very eco-friendly especially with all of the different Absolutely. products and things that you have like what what kind of made you go that route per se oh i love when people ask this question because i'm so proud <laughs> of it so yeah. on, on the island when you go to to a shave ice truck on the island um everything is pono which pono is like a righteous way of living you know a mm -hmm. clean living uh, so it's all compostable materials. So I, I thought that that was really important when bringing, trying to bring a little piece of Hawaii to Orlando was to kind of encompass that. So I'm the first all electric, solar, compostable uh, food truck in Orlando. And I was super excited about that because it's something that no one's really doing. And, and I think we all can. Um, yeah, so it, ma it sure. made it special. Yeah. And it, like the ingredients are so important. Like on the island of Hawaii, they don't have you know, bubblegum <laughs> trees out there, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So bubblegum is not a flavor that's a true traditional Hawaiian shave ice. It's just something that we've kind of adapted to as, as years have gone by. But one of my father, back in the day when he worked in the sugarcane fields and stuff like that, they would just take sugarcane and just wring it out and put it over the ice. And that's what they had. If they had mangoes, wow. they were, they were squeezing mangoes and putting mango juice all over it. You know, that's authentic Hawaiian shave ice. It's not the blue, red, and green bubblegum colors. Now, I love those colors. They're yeah. fun, but that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. I resisted it for a long time, having any of the unnatural colors, uh, just because I, I, I just want to be a good example um, to how we how we treat ourselves. Uh, but there are some kids out there that they really love a rainbow. So, you know, but I'm you can still do that with happy. all the different fruits, you know, because the one with the pog, you know, was like yellow yeah. and it was like a little bit of orange. So Absolutely. you can still kind of cater to, you know, the kids and having the different colors. But I really like the fact that you you try to keep it authentic. And that's what mm -hmm. makes I, I your shave eyes completely different from other ones that I've tried in the past. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad that you said that because 
you're right, there isn't a lot of, of food trucks here that are, you know, eco-friendly, you know, you know, try to be more green and and try to be authentic when you try to serve a product in a different place as well. So that that's pretty cool. Honestly, like I'm not a fan of shave ice only because I don't like, you know, like the texture. I don't like biting hard pieces of ice because I'm really particular about my teeth. If you're but sensitive. like you said, this yours was like really soft and pillowy and it's mm -hmm. it's just good and refreshing. I liked it a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's what we want <laughs> let's Rough talk a little bit about your setup you know as you're talking about your setup you have a, a little shasta which i love i don't know why i love shastas so much i've been looking at them online i want to buy one but i don't know what i'll do with it but um <laughs> travel with it <laughs> uh you you did you build it out yourself or yeah did you design everything or Every, you said you put really solar cool. panels on it yeah, there's a little solar panels for the lights and stuff. Uh, but uh, honestly, whenever I bought it, I told my husband, I was like, hey, babe, I'm going to buy a Shasta trailer and turn it into a shave ice truck. And he's like, what? I was like, yeah, it's going to be cool. And so we found one the day after Christmas a couple years ago. Uh, people had it for a really good price. And I was like, can I get it? After I'd already gotten everything I wanted for Christmas, you know, <laughs> he said, yeah, sure. And I was like, OK, so we got it and it was completely gutted. And that's what I wanted. Uh, it was roadworthy. Uh, she's a 1969 sexy Shasta trailer. Uh, oh. She was she was lime green and kind of a pukey green to begin with. And uh, <laughs> we rolled her down the road. And whenever I got home, I was like, now what? <laughs> so then I had to <laughs> research everything I needed to do to make it a compliance to be a food cart. Um, and that was a, a lot of things you have to do to make sure it's safe for everybody. And that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so then I did that and the licensing and everything and the rest is kind of history. Recently, it's had a, a, an upgrade. My daughter-in-law, uh, she painted the outside with beautiful monstera leaves and made a pink hue to it and changed my shaka to a little bit more grown up shaka, um, <laughs> which I, I love. Uh, but she did that out of a love whenever my father passed away in August. Not a sad thing. Um, he he wanted me to continue doing the shave ice truck and I was going to stop. I was like, I'm, I'm done. It served yeah. its purpose. You know, I was going to stop. And he was like, no, it builds great community brandy and you love it. And he goes, you shouldn't stop. And I was like, I was like, OK, you're right. You know, but then Isla, my daughter in law, she said, well, let me let me fix it up for you, mom. And I was like, OK, and she, it, it's beautiful now. It, it's like my little she shed now. <laughs> No, it is gorgeous. So when I saw, cute. I was like, I was like, oh wow, I never saw that, and it was just so unique how it looks and how you have your setup on the inside and everything. It was and I like love gorgeous. the little slatted, um, the little slatted yeah. windows. And you have your like uh, when we were there, you had your menu written mm -hmm. on the glass. Yeah. You know the the few flavors that for just that specific uh, the, event. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just love a Shasta for some reason. Something about <laughs> it just just tickles my heart. I don't know. I just the vintage look of it. I love to see people buying them and trans, uh, transforming them into businesses. And they're so cute. I, I think they're fun. And we actually have uh, two more in the family. My my daughter-in-law bought one and then my son and daughter-in-law bought one. So. <laughs> what if you had a, you, you made like a little uh, train and you hook them all together. And the second one would be like the Hawaiian food. And then the third one, I don't know what it could be. Maybe clothing. <laughs> maybe like a yeah, Hawaiian, the sheep eyes, right. you know, the Hawaiian <laughs> themed food. And then maybe some Hawaiian themed like you know, like actual jewelries, you know, from there yeah. or something like that, you know? Like and then you pull it around Orlando like a little circus train. <laughs> that would be amazing. Except for when I had this great idea, true story, I don't know how to uh, drive a trailer at all. No? It's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> you got your husband for that, yeah. <laughs> And he's, he's for all of them. He helps with all of them. So it's pretty funny. I was like, what well, a great idea. And then I was like, oh, wait, I can't do that. <laughs> There's nothing we can't learn in life. Right, exactly. <laughs> so you're just, uh, you're stationary now at House on Lang or are you still traveling at times? So occasionally I travel. Um, if, if it's a big event or something like that, I'll travel from the House on Lang. But I'm, I'm pretty much posted up there most of the time. Um, they have me having, you know, I get to pick my own hours and be there whenever I want, but I'm usually there Tuesday through Friday, three to seven. And then on the weekends, Saturday, one to seven, and then Sunday, two to six. A lot of people ask me to be open later, but the whole thing is about slowing down, you know, yeah. and, and relaxing. And so later is, is not, you know, it would be relaxing, but you know, 
it wouldn't be relaxing for me, you know, and I think exactly. that that's being, that's being Pono is, you know, taking care of my family as well and continuing on that path. So. I bet you loved uh, Josh and Kim's reception because it was all Hawaiian themed. And it we got to see so dancers good. and fire. Yeah, that was and, awesome. And the storytelling that yeah. they were having out there was awesome. Do you know so, those but, people that were there, those dancers? Do you know them? Yeah, so that's my extended ohana here in Orlando. That's uh, T and her husband, Adam, and their whole family. And mm-hmm. they own the Kava Lounge. Um, and it's uh, in getting ready to be opened up. And they're wonderful people. So they embraced me uh, whenever my father came into town and we brought him. He was he was in Las Vegas and I brought him here. The Shave Ice Truck helped fund all that. Um, and we brought him here to live with us the last uh, 10 weeks of his life in hospice. And we wanted to do a big luau for him. And T came into our life and she just, she's just a, I don't know, the only word I could think of is magical. She's just a magical person. She just has so much aloha inside of her and she loves teaching and she's a Kumu leader. And she, she just teaches us and our family about our Hawaiian heritage. And so she wanted to, to kind of weave that into Joshua Kim's uh, wedding. And yeah. I, I, I was thankful for her to be able to pick that up and, and share that with everyone. And it, the, they're amazing. <laughs> they really are. They it was such everything. a beautiful night. You, yeah. you can feel their energy. Yeah. How was, sweet they were. Yeah. It was really <laughs> nice. Did you, um, did you grow up in Hawaii as well? Uh, or, or we're just here in the States typically? Uh, unfortunately, I did not get to live in Hawaii. Uh, my okay. father was drafted in a Vietnam war. And um, uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of circumstances, which meant he couldn't go back to his island right mm-hmm. away, even though his family had land in Kauai. Uh, a lot of the men, um, whenever they returned, uh, they didn't really have rights to the property. So he mm-hmm. wasn't uh, really gone back there. So he moved to um, Las Vegas and he lived there. They call that the ninth island. There's more Hawaiians there than really? I am. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. People don't realize that because so many <laughs> of the military uh, men, whenever they got out of Vietnam, they couldn't they couldn't go back to their island. So they mm-hmm. gave them the choice of either Los Angeles or Las Vegas. My dad picked Vegas, of course, because it's bright and beautiful. <laughs> and it Vegas looks Sin like City. <laughs> <laughs> so how he long have you been gamble. in Orlando? <laughs> I've been in Orlando for almost 15 years. Uh, I worked for Darden. I worked in their test kitchen and I worked for them at their, um, at different restaurants. And I just, I had a really good career with them. I was in the military, which is kind of what brought me here to Orlando to begin with. Uh, But I've had a really fun career in restaurant industry. And then with the Navy, I was a CV combat construction. So those are two totally different worlds. Yeah, two (laughs) completely. (laughs) No, but see, that's pretty cool, though, because like, even though you didn't grow up in Hawaii, you still were able to keep that culture within you because there's a lot of people, especially the younger generations where, you know, you have your parents or grandparents born in their country. They come here to the States and they forget their backgrounds. They forget where they come from. And even though Hawaii is part of the United States, it's a completely different culture and lifestyle compared to here within the States. So, you know, you know, talking to you, you know, during the, you know, the wedding and stuff, it's like you, you got to see the, the real difference and then Kim was also talking to me about you know how like the culture is so much different and 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 how the fact that you brought all that in within your business it's just it's just really nice it really is oh thank you <laughs> I, their I, wedding I video it was breathtaking I, watching that video I don't know if you got to see it I was I was like, crying oh I was crying. god I was like oh my god it's so beautiful <laughs> it was so beautiful. I've never been to Hawaii. It's been on my lifelong Me bucket too. List. That's on my bucket list of places to visit. I actually spoke with somebody at work today because I, I do a sales and marketing for, you know, vacation packages for a company, a resort company here. And one of the guests, she was actually going to Hawaii her second time, um, but this time with the kids and she's she loves it and she wants to continue going back again. But she said she was going to Oahu. Isn't that, isn't that more like commercialized per se in yes. Oahu? It yeah. is, yeah. So, so Kauai is what they call the garden aisle. Uh-huh. So it's, it's mainly just all natural. It was perfect for Kim because, you know, she wanted to go hiking everywhere mm-hmm. in her, <laughs> her gown. Uh, but Kauai is pretty much untouched. Uh, it's really beautiful. And, and 
it's very quaint and it's very small town and very like everybody knows who you are. As soon as they saw me, even though I had never been there, they were like, are you so-and-so's cousin? And I was like, I am. <laughs> I was like, because like, like, to me, I look, I look very pale skinned for a Hawaiian, yeah. but my structure, my bone structure, my nose um, it's very, uh, it looks like I'm from Hawaii, but in Oahu, my father, that's where my machine came from this because my father was in Wamanalo for a little while. Oahu is very developed. Most of the people from Kauai had to be moved to Oahu. Uh, so it's a super concentrated, um, group of people. So, I mean, it's also, you know, a lot of military heritage there as well. Uh, it's a beautiful place as well, but they're, they're more commercialized. For yeah. sure. <laughs> I figure because when she told me that, it's like, I, I, it's like, I don't know that much of the different cities within Hawaii, but I was like, that one's definitely more commercialized for sure. So, but I would still love to go. And, and, and oh, all the pictures hey. were, were all the hiking that Kim and Josh did. Like, I would love to, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to hike, but I want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you uh, on that. <laughs> just put me on the mountain. I'll look and then we can have a little picnic, I'll, you know, enjoy the view. <laughs> I would do such a long hike. They did what, like an eight, 10 hour hike? Like that's just I know. easy. Yeah, I can I maybe do maybe deep. like a three or four hour hike. That's max. Well, there's a place, <laughs> there's a place in Kauai where you can jump over a waterfall. I did that. Really? That'd be fun. It, it looks like Martian earth. Like the earth is so red. It looks like it is Mars and it's so cool. There's certain areas whenever you're, cause we drove up to Waimea Canyon. I don't mm. know. I don't know if they knew that there was a road there, but there was a road. You can just drive up. To <laughs> I think they wanted to take the seated route by just hiking it up instead. <laughs> there's a road. Just we'll let them know next time. Okay. We'll let See, them know. That's good time. to know. That way, there's a road for you. Steph. Road. You can do the yeah. road and I can do the hike. You just wait for me i'll wait for you at the top. <laughs> and wait for me at the top and i'll be there all tired and exhausted i don't mind hiking but it's like you have to think about as long as you hike up yep. the same hike amount back, back down. down yep and then i get nervous like what happens if i like get injured or something i have yeah. a cell phone service to call for help no oh. there's n cell phones don't work very good on that island <laughs> Another it's like me when I went to uh, Colombia because I'm I'm from Colombia. I'm actually Col a Colombian, Russian, and Polish. So it's like very unique mix, just oh, like you, right? Perfect. So right. <laughs> uh, I went with my cousin to to Santa Marta, which is on the coast. That's where the uh, Sierra Nevada uh, mountain landscape is. So you got ocean and mountains like right there. And there's Beautiful. a place called Parque Tayrona, which is all, it's very indigenous and they have certain parts of that area open for the public to be able to do the hikes and things like that. And it yeah. took us literally all day to hike to be able to get to the uh, beach area because there's so many um, untouched beaches that you can't swim. So you had to hike to a certain area that you can go and do that. So it's, it's it'd probably be somewhat similar. So I would love yes. to be able to go to Hawaii and, and check that and do some hikings too, because the one in Colombia that I did was amazing. And it, looking at some of the Kim and Josh's pictures, very similar. Not as beautiful the water in Hawaii had it, but it's still it's still pretty much similar <laughs> to it. <so. laughs> what's what's home is home, right? Right, you know? exactly. But, exactly. Uh, in Colombia, they have an ice confection as well. Is that a respado? How do they? Yes, it's yeah. respado. And uh, respado. one of the main things they use is uh, condensed milk. Oh yeah, we love top. condensed milk. I love. Oh, you use condensed milk too? Oh. Bruh, that is like. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. We're gonna have to try that when we come down. Oh to no, this. it's good, but they don't have like, the natural condensed. flavors. It's so good. Like when I go to Columbia, oh. time, I always get shaved up. Uh, you know, the, the snow cones, yeah. Yeah. The regular Hawaiian shave ice, and and then you put the whatever flavors that. They're not natural, but they're still good. But yeah. the condensed hey. milk. It's what it's, makes it the it's best. the bomb. They put yes. like this much too. It's not a little bit of condensed no, milk. It's no, like, they, they, um, they load it up. <laughs> that's a good thing. I, I, yeah, I love them. I, I love so many cultures have a shave ice confection. Yes. And like every once in a while, we'll do things that are of a specific culture, but I'll bring somebody in and ask them, hey, show me, uh, show mm -hmm. me how you do it in your culture because I would like to learn. And so like we did... Um, piraguas with my daughter-in-law she's from puerto rico and mm -hmm. she wants she wants to she was like let me be a pira pigua pig piraguera is that how you say it Pira what's in it what's in the piraguera what's what's the difference so, like it's like layered in a cup and they make it to a cone on the top uh, so whenever they put the the syrup over they and they drench it in syrup like awesome just strawberry flavor 
just and then they put condensed milk on it too and they don't have any whipped cream or anything like that but it's just like that and then they they put um they put fruit in water and they mm. let it marry for a little while and then they put it yeah. on top of it as well so it's like super you know it's really fun so there's lots of different ice confection in all different cultures and it's fun to learn about them so I like yeah that's spot, true spot, though, it's similar spot, but also right. very different at the same time so <laughs> Now that we know that you're like a true Orlandoan as well, 15 plus years, uh, we want to do oh, yes. a little like speed <laughs> round. So we're going to ask you some questions okay. and we're just going to get like your first, um, your first thought. So what is your okay. favorite uh, Orlando restaurant? Oh my goodness. Well, Pig Floyd's is one of my favorites. Pig Pink Floyd. Pig Floyd's Pink and Star 88. Uh, 488 is good. I've been to Pink Floyd once, but I didn't. I didn't have any of the barbecue stuff. I think I just had like a like a chicken sandwich, and it wasn't barbecued. So I would have to definitely go back to Pink mm -hmm. Floyd's and try it out. That's the one over there off of Mills, there, right? I like their yeah apple fennel coleslaw. That's all I gotta say. That's like barbecue and apple fennel coleslaw. But Ooh. <laughs> so good. Okay, I gotta try that. I haven't tried that. Yeah. <laughs> So what is your a favorite activity <laughs> that you like to do around Orlando? Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I, I love going to the parks and seeing the big trees that we have around here. It's one of my favorite things is like, we have so many of these gorgeous trees that are super old. Like there's one in my mm -hmm. neighborhood. Um, it's called Big Tree Park and it's probably one of the oldest trees in Orlando. Um, and it's nice to go to these big, beautiful, you know, standing works of art that have been there through everything uh, yeah. i think they're really cool so that's one of my favorite things my husband and i are kind of tree nerds and we like to go around orlando we see plants and trees because there's so much biodiversity here in orlando i mean like we have probably 20 gardens within a couple miles it's pretty crazy and i think that's not something people think about when they think about orlando no. is you know the wildlife and and no, you said parks. <laughs> I just assumed you meant Disney. Yeah, Universal. at first I was gonna say, "Oh, Disney Universal," but then you start explaining no parks with the trees and stuff. And it's true because I live in downtown as well, and right in front of my house we have this huge tree, and it looks so old, and it's like you can tell that that tree has seen and lived through so many things. You know? <laughs> do you have a is, oh do you have a God, favorite yeah. park that you like to visit? And she said that you like to go through different ones. Is there one in particular that's your favorite? Well, there's the Mana Mana. Manalo Museum I can't remember it's called the it's called the mayor's tree so this tree used to reach across the road right by the Orlando Science Center it actually used to go across the road like it would over the road to the other mm -hmm. side and uh, that arm fell in a, in a storm about I think eight or nine years ago uh, but the mayor's tree is just massive and my husband this year for our anniversary in uh, May last year um he took there for like uh, one of those instant picnic people came and put a picnic underneath it which was Aww, amazing that is so sweet have you ever tried that <laughs> have you ever had that no no, no like these people come and they put they put the picnic down for you and then you have a picnic and then when you're done you clean anything up <laughs> that's, oh, that idea. Nice. That, that's perfect date idea so that is a like perfect date idea <laughs> you see, we're learning something new. I'm telling you, we love talking to different people that even though living here in Orlando is like, there's so much things and you can't see them all or do them all. So it's like, it's good to be able to learn about them. That way you can actually go and see them, especially with us, since we always like to talk about different things to see and do that's not theme park related. It's always good to learn about these new things. So that's yeah. actually good. <laughs> the Mills 50 bar crawl too. Yes. Oh yeah, we, we, we need to do a bar crawl. But you don't drink that I know, much. I still like to go out. <laughs> I actually did the Thornton, the, the Thornton Park um, Art and Wine Festival walk back, you know, before the whole pandemic thing hit. Yeah. And they're doing one again, I think, this week. I think it's this week or next week. I, I got to look it up again. And it's right down the road for oh, me. It'll be fun to talk about bar crawl. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. We're going to wrap it up with the last question because our audio, this audio seems to be having problems again. What's your number one pro tip for Orlando? Like the biggest secret you learned while living here? Um, I have learned that there is a lot of young people uh, that champion 
businesses that have gone out of their way to support me and like people like lemon hearted chef jelly Iram, they they have taught me that there's so much more to orlando than just the theme parks there's so many wonderful uh businesses out there that are small and um i think that mills 50 area is amazing that's where gideon's bakehouse started and yeah and yeah. gideon's now is at disney and you spend three hours in line to get a cookie, I can go walk over to East End Market and get one in five minutes. You know, they've taught me that there's so much food awesome right here that I don't really have to go outside of downtown Orlando to eat anywhere in the world. I mean, we have a Nigerian restaurant not too far from here that is just insane. Like uh, as being chef and having a chef driven shave ice truck and people wouldn't think that that's what I should be doing a lot of people were like what (laughs) I there's so many small niche things here that are special and I I think a pro tip would be to really dive into your local community um, and to find out what's going on around you because if you pass by a store 10 times and you've never gone in it um, you're missing out because there's so many wonderful little tiny stores that you just like the house on lane it's on a street in the middle of, of, of Mills 50, but unless you go one street back from Pig Floyd's, then you're not going to see them. Uh, I but never if you saw by it. And you're like, <laughs> curious about what's inside. <laughs> A lot yeah, of people, I mean, they're like, he, I that was his the first, cutest little that was my never first heard time. Of. Yeah, that was the first <laughs> time going to House of Lane. And then, like, I, I've heard the name before, but I never, never knew about it. And it was so funny that you say that about that whole tip because it's so true. So we had a recently a video on TikTok that we posted about Orlando and that a lot of the people are saying that there's not a local community. And I'm thinking to myself, there is. They just, you just haven't have had, you just have to look and they haven't had a chance to, to find that yet. Yeah. So I, I'm glad that you actually brought that up as a pro tip because it's like people, a lot of the people I commented, oh, Orlando sucks. There's no sense of community. You know, there's, I, I don't have any friends. Like, just like anything, you got to put yourself out there and yeah. you got to, and, and there is a sense of community. And you're right. And here in, in downtown, right. especially there's a nice little, nice little niche of communities out there for sure. And that's why we started our podcast because exactly. we wanted to talk to people like you and you know, showcase all these things. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. You know, that's what the house and Lang and I are trying to do is community. That's not just a bar crawl, but you know, we still like bar crawls, <laughs> yes. you know, they have classes weekly and different events and stuff. So there we're doing, um, uh, there's a free movie, I believe in next week and, you know, things like that, just to try to build community. All right, Brandy. Well, thank you so much for talking. Yes, to us. thank pleasure. you. It was a pleasure to get a little bit, learn, learn a little bit more about, you know, the shave eyes and how you're, you know, helping out with the community. So thank you for being with us. And we are looking forward to stopping by and trying some new flavors too. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate it too. Mahalo, guys. I appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.